How did you get involved with the Take No Prisoners program? Well, uh, the guy that I play volleyball with, Tim Hahn, um, was uh, roommates with uh, Jerry Humphrey, who is one of the co-hosts for um, WFBE's um, version of Take No Prisoners. Yeah, that's the public radio show. Right. And he does that with uh, Ben Hamper. Mm -hmm. And I know I have a public radio show, Folk, Bluegrass, and Beyond, that comes on. That we're separated from Take No Prisoners by Afro Pop, but you know, it we we use we always promote the show that's coming up later on in the sure. evening. Yeah, um, and I like music of, music of all types. Um, and there's really not I, when I was in California for a few years in the military, there was quite a bit of alternative music or mm -hmm. new wave music on some of the stations. Um, it all sound, a lot of it sounds like rock and roll to me, mm -hmm. but that they like to call it alternative music. Mm -hmm. um, there was quite a bit of it out there, and I grew fond of some of it. When I moved back to Flint, there was there was really not much of any media coverage for that type of music. Um, um, ben and Jerry were the only source I saw in town mm -hmm. of people playing that kind of music. And I think my favorite type of programming is uh, shooting music of whatever type it might be. Jerry Humphrey asked me for an application to our workshop and I asked him, well, what do you want to work on? And he noted that he did take no prisoners and thought um, he wanted to do something with rock, but you know, rock bands, but he wasn't really sure exactly how he wanted to do it. And I thought, well, you're public radio and we're public access television. It just seems that, uh, that we should be able to mess something together and you know, everybody had the same goals of just promoting some music um, that didn't get a whole lot of media attention and um, nobody was really in it for the money. Mm -hmm. So um, we hit it off and we scheduled a show and they've just kind of gone since then. We interspersed those with um, little talks with the bands. People can, they see the bands on stage mm -hmm. and uh, this way they get to kind of see what the guys might have to say about themselves and what they do. You guys, oh, you, all you all spend time in strip bars? <laughs> I don't. I is that, is I, that I, part I, of the rock and roll lifestyle? I did. I don't he he won't admit it, but we all do it. Yeah. Um, you actually, still I dance, strip? actually, I dance in strip bars um, for the dancers and the bouncers. And he makes some good make, money, too. I do. I make drink money in there. and uh, I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Uh, it's bad. His girlfriend won't, girlfriend let, him. won't let me. <laughs> That's a bad image for the band, too. You guys are kind of clean yeah. cut. You know? Yeah, yeah we try and put off a real positive image. It's a collegiate. If you're not having it's a fun. collegiate crowd. You're trying to pull in here. Oh, without a doubt. Without Hence a doubt, the, a uh, crowd. Anyone that's willing to drink from a douchebag. Uh, diet squirt. Diet squirt. Kind of of diet course. squirt. We're also drink diet squirt from a douchebag. We're also really. Close. We're also really trying to show a politically aware attitude. <laughs> yes. Our interview segments are not really conventional. Um. Oh my God! Things are happening in the studio. Get this on camera. So, Paul, who do you like listening to? Oh, well, birthday party, Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds, Big Black. Big Black, Big Black. Are you getting this, Steve? We're getting a reaction to you now. <laughs> this is a Paul, hey, Paul, no, no, wait, black, no. nice Paul. strong arm. Let's go oh, to, where'd you go? Oh, oh. Country Bob Let's go partners. to some footage of Smiling Sacrifice. Let's go. We try to be anti-aesthetic, I guess, as far as um, we use multiple cameras on a shoot like this to pick mm -hmm. up nice shots. Um, I do a lot of shows that we cut with multiple cameras such as this and we wanted to be as much unlike any other program as we could be so we made a rule of just using one camera for our interviews mm -hmm. even if we had eight people in the studio mm -hmm. and just dollying it. You just do a pan back and forth with well, people. Well and we stuff. make sure that we have dollies on the cameras and, mm -hmm. um, and we roll it 
like madmen across mm -hmm. the studio and um, literally run over the uh, the interviewee's feet. Over here, Steve. No, oh. oh, thanks a lot. And it makes for it makes for some fun shots. And again, it may not be aesthetically correct, mm -hmm. or whatever that may be. Um, but we think it makes it look different enough mm -hmm. for our taste that it suits the type of music that we're shooting. And but when you deal with experimental television or film or music or anything, what you're doing is expanding the parameters. Techniques that were considered rather unconventional and, and very unpleasant uh, in the past uh, now are just taken for granted. For example, I can remember um, back in the, t the silent picture days when they showed a close-up. It was the first time they ever showed a close-up, and they showed somebody, you know, head and shoulders, and the audience booed. Mm -hmm. They said, they started to call out, show us their feet, show us their feet, because they had always seen a full-frame shot. And when someone did a close-up, it was, it violated the rules. And uh, very likely things that you're just playing with now, you know, things that you just try, because let's just do this for the heck of it. A certain number of those things that come out of the experimental, the, the play, of video work because so much of video work is work and when people play with it they create things and a few of those things Tend turn out to work they, they, they come back and they're used the difference with uh, some of the early film pioneers that you may be referring to is that um, I think they were actually progressing and I think that we intentionally regress on our program we consider that a, a fun way to do yeah. it well, I, that's, there's sort of a, a style, I think, in a lot of the alternative music now that because commercial music is so orchestrated mm -hmm. and complex and, you know, you, you have, you know, 78 track recorders and 400 people recording on every track and it's, you know, there's 7,000 edits in a three and a half minute pop song. Uh, that sense of sort of raw simplicity, which a lot of the, uh, I guess, new ways or punk music, which was the last new wave, right. uh, a lot of stuff, uh, Talking Heads is a good example of, of a group that had a very stripped down, very fundamental sound that later just became mainstream because they were strong enough to, to carry that sound or that idea forward into, in essence, the whole community. 